Welcome back. We've talked about symmetric encryption algorithms and asymmetric encryption algorithms. Let's talk a little bit about some applications of cryptographic algorithms, in particular cryptographic hash functions. So what's a hash function? Well, you take an arbitrary quantity of data and you effectively scrunch it down or apply some function to it which gives you a, a fixed size datum. So for example, a, a, a particular algorithm might take an arbitrary text and generate a 128-bit string. That's what MD5 does, for example. Right. So what's a cryptographic hash function? Well, it's a function like that, a hash function, that has some additional properties. Uh, in particular, it should be difficult to construct uh, a, a text that has a particular hash value. It should be difficult to modify a, a text without changing its hash value, and it should be unlikely that two different messages have the same hash value, and we say hash to the same value, and we call that a collision if you have two different messages which, which do hash to the same value. A hash value is also often called a message digest. For example, there's a famous hash function called MD5, and in that context, the MD stands for message digest. Okay, let's introduce some vocabulary. We say that a function, this is a hash function f, is pre-image re resistant if, given a particular hash value, it's difficult to find a message which hashes to that value. We say that uh, the function is second pre-image resistant if we, have, if we already have a message and its hash value, and it's difficult to find another message which hashes to the same value. And then we say a function is strong collision resistance if it's hard to find any two values which hash to the same value. Now, are there collisions? Yes, there are, because uh, there's an infinite number of texts out there, and they're all hashing down to this finite space. It's a pretty big space, mind you. If we have a hash of 128 bits, there's two to the 128 possible values there. But still, that's a finite number, and we have this infinite number of texts, so there's going to be some collisions. In fact, there's going to be an infinite number of collisions. All right. So seems like, well, we ought to be able to find these collisions. Well, there's something called the birthday paradox, or the birthday attack. Uh, you may have heard of this. You know, if you've got 50 people in a room, it's almost certain that there's going to be two people with the same birthday. And why is that? Because you've got an, a finite number of birthdays, and they're all, and, and, and the, the individuals are all hashing to that finite set. So uh, it turns out that there's a theory, theorem that you can prove that says if you've got uh, a fixed finite set of hash values, how, how often, how many values do you have to look at before you find a collision? Well, on average, you have to find, you have to look at 1.25 times the square root of h, where h is the size of the hash set. So, for example, if we've got a hash value of 128 bits, that means there's 2 to the 128 possible values. The square root of that is 2 to the 64. So, what that means is that if we have MD5, for example, on average you have to look at 1.25 times 2 to the 64 values before you'll find a collision. That's a huge set, but you certainly can do that with modern computers. Okay, so hash functions are usually used for integrity, not for confidentiality. So for example, if we've got a document retrieval system, we want to know if the value that we've retrieved is the same as the value that we stored. And in a secure uh, communication system, we want to know that the value that we receive is the same as the value that was sent. And you can use cryptographic hash functions to give you pretty high assurance that that's the case. We say that a cryptographic hash function binds the bytes of a file together, meaning that we get a result which, if you change any byte in that file, you're very likely to change the hash function. So how does this work? Well, suppose we've got a sensitive file that we're worried might be corrupted in some way. Well, we compute the cryptographic hash function for it, and we store that securely somewhere else. And then each time we go to access that file, we recompute the hash function and compare it. And because it's collision resistant, and we have these properties of pre-image resistance, uh, it's very likely that if there was even one bit changed in that file, then the, the, these two hash values would not match. And if the two values do match, then it's very likely that no change was, was uh, created to that file. 
Okay, there are a number of hash functions which are available commercially. For example, MD5, uh, which is a message digest 5, generates a 128-bit hash. And there's a number of functions called the SHA functions, uh, the secure hash algorithm, SHA1, SHA2, SHA256, SHS, uh, and those generate 160-bit functions. Okay, so what have we said? Well, a cryptographic hash function takes an arbitrary text and crunches it down essentially into a fixed size value that depends on every byte, even every bit in the text. It should be very difficult for these functions to find collisions, i.e. to find two different values which give you the same hash value when you compute the hash function on them. And the way you use a hash function typically is to, to get integrity that is to show that it's very unlikely that a file or a value has changed if the hash value is the same as one you previously computed because it would be very difficult for somebody to modify that file in such a way to get the same hash value and to get the, the modifications that they really want to the file. Thanks. <laughs>